On today's episode of Watch Share Go, I buy the cheapest and the most hated Viper truck. What is going on guys? I am Watch Share Go, and today I'm here with my newest truck. That's three for some reason, but this is a 2005 Dodge Ram SRT10 powered by the Viper engine. I paid $14,000 for this non-salvage truck with 145,000 miles on it, making it the cheapest and I would say kind of the cleanest one in the US for sale right now. So we're gonna go around the truck Take a look at everything on it, talk about what makes it special, and then go drive it for a little bit. So you might be asking yourself, why did you buy the quad cab? And the reason is because I actually use my trucks. I've driven the single cab, and yes, I know the single cab comes in a manual. Yes, it was not a very fun driving experience the time I drove it. When I saw this, I was like, that's a real truck, and you can actually use it to haul your friends and your tools and, and actually, you know, pull trailers. So of course I bought this. In this truck, the Viper engine is backed by the 48RE out of the Cummins, the four-speed automatic, and you can tow 7,500 pounds. And honestly, it'll tow just about anything. We've put more than 7,500 pounds behind this so far. And since we're back here talking about towing capacity and the bed, let's take a look in the bed. And you can see it comes with this uh, bed mat that's supposed to actually be attached on here. It's just not, so I need to reattach that. And it has this tonneau cover right here. You grab this handle and then you can open up the factory tonneau cover. And this factory tonneau cover was added first, probably because it makes it look a lot better, but also because they wind tunnel tested this and it'll do almost 150 mile an hour and they needed to control the truck a little better. So the tonneau cover was really added probably to make the airflow a lot better and put this giant spoiler on the back of the truck. They say this truck went through a lot of wind tunnel testing, but honestly, I think they just wanted to make this look different than the uh, base model Ram that it really is. It's completely loaded, but uh, if you take all this plastic off, it's no different than like, you know, a thousand dollar Ram that you'd find on the street somewhere. Let's open the hood up and show you guys the part that you really wanna see. Of course, these SRT10 badges are special. This hood is completely built for this truck. It's got the Viper powered badges and we have this hood scoop. It's called like the Power Bulge and uh, it has Viper teeth in it. As you can see, there's little snake teeth right there that point at each other. They filled those in so it would look like a snake. Uh, I feel like that front ram could have been replaced with a Viper logo. You of course have chrome grill inserts from the factory. There we go. The hood opens super nicely on these things. We've got the Viper powered logo up there. And the part you guys wanted to see, here is the 8.3 liter V10 Viper engine. That thing is an absolute monster of an engine. You can see it rolls way back up all the way to the firewall. I mean, it must got to be bigger than the Cummins. Of course, I bought this used. It's got a couple tasteful mods. We've got a K&N air intake right there with a little divider to kind of keep temps down where it's pulling in the air. You can pull it out of the fender right there. And uh, honestly, that's about all that I've found so far other than this truck having a system and Lloyd's mats, a couple nice touches. We do have a completely custom front bumper that is massive and adds a lot to the stance of the truck. It actually makes the truck look really low, but it's funny if you take a look at how low the front bumper is and the rest of the truck, there's probably six inches difference right there. The front end makes it look extremely fast. Right here we have 22 inch wheels. These aren't exactly the Viper wheels, they're a perfect clone of them and then they just kind of hit the zoom button. Enlarge these guys and put some massive brakes up front that stop this thing really well. And for not having a trailer brake, when you're towing, they can shut trailers down really well too. So it's awesome having those massive Viper brakes up front. Of course, all of these trucks are two wheel drive, rear wheel drive only. I got brand new tires because I picked this up from a dealership and they just replaced the tires. And it also has a Magnaflow exhaust. It's laser engraved there, it just needs cleaned up a little bit. So that's nice. It, it sounds really good when this thing's running. Before we go inside, let's talk about how big this truck is. It is 19 feet long. It looks like a pretty normal sized truck, but it's huge. It weighs almost 6,000 pounds in the quad cab. And you know how Koenigsegg has the one to one? Well, this is the one to 10, or maybe even the one to 11. There's one horsepower that Viper engine supplies for every 10 or 11 pounds of overall weight. This thing, it's pretty heavy, but they did a pretty good job making sure that it, it hides its weight. You know that's true because the single cabs can do zero to 16 about 4.9 seconds and the quad cabs 
are really almost as fast. They run it in 5.3 seconds. Let's start in the back of the cab. As you can see, I have been using it as a work truck. We've got gloves from working on rear ends and a jumping a stranger's car this morning with the O'Reilly's jump pack there. You can see the Lloyd's mats. And what's cool is this thing has a system. It's a little dirty looking, but there's an Alpine V-Power MRP F300, which should be a 300 watt amp. I'm guessing that's a three or four channel that's running most of the car. And right here, we have the Infinity subwoofer from the factory, which honestly does a pretty good job, even today. We've got great leather suede inserts that feel very nice. They're perforated too, so you don't sweat when you're sitting there. Sliding bag glass and uh, you know, a couple of hooks for your clothes. It's a pretty simple interior. On the passenger rear side of the SRT10 truck, we can flip up this seat. It's nice how they just flip right up and down. You don't have to release anything. And then you can grab this knob here, flip this over, and it extends the cargo capacity so that you're not worried about the hump there, like the trans tunnel, and you get a nice big spot that can hold some gigantic boxes if you flip this seat up. What's crazy is they even made a provision to leave the cup holders in case somebody's sitting over there. So we'll flip that back shut, flip the seat down. The front of the Viper truck is where the magic happens. You can see they took the normal plastic dash out of all the other Rams and let's put a double-sided tape strip of adhesive on there that says SRT10. That's, that's what's different. Also, you get much nicer seats, SRT10 in the headrests and the uh, suede inserts. And I will say, it's a really good interior for what it is. They Just the right amount of upgrades to make it look classy and kind of reflect what the truck actually is. On the driver's side, we have the very nice seats again, but it's a little bit worn out. You can see that the suede's starting to kind of roll off of it, and there's a little cut right there because it gets weak over time. I need to have uh, somebody come through and pull all the stitching out of this and replace those inserts. One of the crazy things that shows you this truck's absolutely loaded is it has power pedals, which I think is pretty rare on this Gen Dodge. We've got really pretty pedal covers down there that take a lot to clean. We have a center seat, that flips up and down, and is very cool inside. It has flip up dividers, got all my papers in here already, sob keys but right here we have these little dividers that flip up and down and keep things from moving when you flip this up to use it as a seat so that holds everything in from the top you can flip up these dividers to make sure nothing moves and there's power in the console right there change holder i mean they really kind of thought through the center console on this car it's pretty impressive dodge in the center i have a very nice alpine navigation unit that's aftermarket we have this little ashtray that i'm now using for receipts and straw trash flip down cup holder and we have this annoying hook that a bunch of people use to hold trash bags for some reason like most nice trucks we have a gigantic sunroof full auto gotta give them that Everything's auto, it closes in auto, it vents in auto. Very, very good job on the sunroof. This was, uh, you know, from a time when there wasn't that much auto stuff. Only the driver window in this truck is auto. So there's the sunroof opening and closing. We've got Homelink. And yes, what you're seeing there is the actual miles per gallon this truck gets. It's rated, uh, this one I saw the window sticker said eight and 10. I think that was revised to like nine and 12, but the reality of it is you're probably never going to get better than nine out of this truck. Uh, even when you're just driving around at 1500, 2000 RPM, it drinks fuel trying to fill those 10 cylinders. 8.3 liters, such a terrible power plant when you think about it. I mean, the Huracan can make that with three liters less. Uh, Mercedes can make 300 horsepower on a four cylinder. It's just one of the worst engines. It's, it's like driving around with a tank engine, but it sounds good and it's cool to say you have a Viper truck. That's what this thing has going for it. It's, uh, it's not efficient. It's not really good at being a truck. It's hilarious. It's very American and it's pretty fun to drive. It, it sits high, it roll, lumbers around. Well, I mean, we're gonna go drive it here in a minute, but let's take a look at the dash. Here I have an aftermarket steering wheel. It is huge. It's carbon with a red stripe that I, I do appreciate that, red stitching. This is much too big like all these aftermarket steering wheels are. You can barely put your hand around them. They feel meaty, but they're, they're pretty terrible in reality. It looks good, I'll give it that. Viper logo on the horn engine start button the key does not actually turn to a start position like a normal truck it stops at on and then you use the engine start button to start the truck we've got the pvo logo premium fuel only and right here 
the SRT auto meter oil temperature gauge. Those are of course factory. Uh, SRT was very good about adding auto meter gauges to their vehicles and they're all awesome. They all match work great super nice to have a little bit of extra info about what this engine's doing i'd say that's a pretty good overview of the viper truck let's get going driving my viper truck there's less than five thousand of these that were ever produced so it's rare enough there's not a bunch of people out driving them around you you can usually find two or three in every city in the u.s because uh, you know people wanted vipers and they didn't want to pay viper prices is this the cheapest way to buy a viper engine uh you gotta think i paid a little more than fourteen thousand dollars and this truck originally retailed for over 50. that said if it was in a viper it would be worth far more than that a 2005 viper is about 28,000 ish dollars right now, 25 if you buy it right. And uh, I'd love to have one of those, uh, but this truck was just the right opportunity and I, I wanted to add another truck I could go play with. So, as you can see, we're driving around now and this thing just lumbers along. You can barely hear the bumps, you can't really feel any of the bumps. Uh, it's still sporty and it communicates very well through the wheel for being a truck. It doesn't just steamroll, but uh, it's, you're definitely driving a steamroller around. All right, we'll go around this corner here and get on it just a little bit. Love to hit it from zero, but here is a 20 roll. No wheel spin, just going. <laughs> it feels incredibly slow, but it's, it's honestly like the speedometer is moving a lot faster than you think it is. The truck's going a lot faster than you think it is. It exceeds the speed limit really fast. I'll show you guys the gauges here. Here's full throttle. It is honestly much faster than most of the trucks you drive. At the same time, all the new trucks are very, very fast. All the new diesels get up to speed with no problem. The new gas engines are quick. All the new transmissions. It's, it's a very different world today than it was when this truck came out and it was unheard of performance in a truck. The SRT-10 held the record for world's fastest production truck for quite a while. Honestly, I kind of think it still does. I don't know if that was ever broken because no one's really out chasing that record anymore. It's a kind of a weird one to chase. In town, it's very nice to drive. Right now, we're just idling along a little less than 1,500 RPM at 50 miles an hour, and the gas mileage is still holding at 9.7 miles per gallon. Uh, no matter what you do, you can't really improve it. I, I thought my driving would bring the gas mileage up a little bit from when I bought the truck. No change, even babying it around all the time. It's not great. Luckily, gas is about a dollar a gallon right now. Premium's dirt cheap. It only runs premium, but uh, I can drive it all I want right now. One of the nice things about this massive 8.3 liter engine is you're never asking it for power. It's always there. If you give it quarter throttle, the speedometer just flies up. It doesn't have to shift or anything. It can just stay in its normal shift pattern and it's, it's doing the speed limit right there, just in seconds. So it's cool that it has 500 horsepower and 525 foot pounds of torque and running through the diesel transmission, it, it kind of feels like a diesel. The quad cab is a very, very different truck from the single cab. Uh, the single cab feels a little smaller, a little more like, like you're kind of in the cabin instead of just sitting in a giant expanse. And uh, I'm sure you're a little more engaged with the manual, but there's nothing but wheel spin. It actually seems like this could win in a race. It turns out they're two very different trucks. So there you have it. That is my 2005 Dodge Ram SRT10 quad cab. It was the cheapest one in the US. It was the world's fastest production truck. And welcome to the channel. We got a lot of cool stuff planned for this truck. So that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shopwatchjargo.com where you can get cool shirts not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time. I am going to run into O'Reilly's here and get some parts for the R8. Giving the snake a drink. Those snakes have to eat too.